Hi, I'm Daniel Bergman. And Matt Petitjean. You're watching Fly TV, and today we're doing this. Hi, and welcome back to Fly TV. I'm Daniel Bergman, and this is... I'm Marc Petitjean, coming from Switzerland, and this is my first time here. Yeah, and we're up here in Schoenayok, and today we're gonna try to do some grayling fishing. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna be that hard. <laughs> there is fish all over the place. Fish. Yeah, and, and you can see there are so many, and, and you can see the fins. Yeah. They are, it's pretty much like uh, fishing a bone, a bone fish. fish. Yeah. I mean, I never saw a place like this. They're cruising on the surface for small black gnats. Uh, so we're going to mainly, mainly try to fish with dry flies. Yeah. And our guide for today is Robert Hanson uh, from Fisher Dream. He's going to be taking care of us today in an excellent way, I guess, as usual. Excellent. Everything seems to be perfect. Yeah. Okay, what, what, what is your suggestion as far as the um, flies is concerned to start with? I see they're eating like small black midges, uh, okay. black nuts and black stuff, nut. so I'm gonna go for that. Uh, I will probably uh, choose another option, yeah. because I saw on the way up uh, that there is quite a lot of uh, caddies as well. Yeah. Let's start with, with one of those pretty big... Uh, yeah. One. That's nice for the faster current as well. It's easy yeah. to see and it a, gives a good silhouette. But that doesn't mean that they are going to feed on that. No, I but mean, you can uh, try. Because uh, we see very well uh, head and tail, yeah. which means that they might be also feeding on there. I don't know, what is your opinion? I've seen several fish uh, picking these small black nuts. Okay. Uh, so I'm putting on a small black La Petite Mer. I think it's a good option. I've had uh, really big success with that pattern here before. I tell you what, Daniel, this is the first place ever I've seen so many fish rising in the same time. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Honestly. Yeah. They're rising all the time, all the time. So where are you going? Uh, I'm thinking of maybe going around a little bit. Okay. Approaching them from above, a okay. bit further out, and then you can what have fun with the guys in here if you want. What about if I stand on the other if you side walk of around that one? The stone? Yeah. yeah. And so we do not disturb this exactly, nice area. Exactly, school first. here. <laughs> okay? Yeah, let's do it. So, thank you very much, buddy. <laughs> See you soon. Well, the problem now is they got so much to eat. It's going to be... <laughs> Hard to get them to choose our flies. Well done, Mark! On the big fly! On the big fly! <laughs> Great stuff! It looked like a pretty good sized fish. Look at that. I don't want to put too much pressure on it, otherwise, I may lose it. Ah, missed one! This is, this is not exactly a kilo, but I think there is some larger one coming soon. But definitely, it's nice to make a couple of casts and to get this kind of fish. Let me just release it as quick as possible, because that's the best place for fish is to be in the water. So, thank you. Great. <laughs> Good start. I found a spot out here uh, between the calmer water and the faster current. 
uh, where there seems to be quite a number of large fish cruising. Uh, so I put on a slightly bigger CDC and elk uh, just to be able to see it in the sort of way we water out there. So let's see if we can try to catch one. I can't see my fly. They're just in the edge of the fast current, which makes the makes it really tricky to see your fly. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I just saw a big splash out there, and apparently it was my fly. <laughs> Another good sized grayling. We're really lucky. We actually managed to hit the first days of summer up here. But just look at this. It's amazing. And there's the fly. CDC and elk. The CDC and elk is supposed to imitate a sedge. Uh, but it doesn't seem to matter. We don't see many sedge, but. but uh, <laughs> the main thing is to actually be able to see the fly in the current. Uh, the fish doesn't really seem to matter. It works well. La 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 la. Oof. Whoa, is it heavy? Yeah. And apparently this guy doesn't want to come in the calm here. Look at that guy. Beauty mark. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that big guy. Oh, that was not a lie, Daniel. <laughs> this is probably the best place to fish grilling in the world, I guess. I mean, I never had any any opportunity like this. No, this is Honestly. crazy. And as you know, I'm not born yesterday. <laughs> if you take a little time, you can walk a tight rope. I think I'm starting to smell food. Good. <laughs> I'm hungry as a bear. And every single time you feel you fall behind, just take a deep breath, let it all unwind. I thought I would just do a, like a quick walkthrough to where you find the grayling in a big stream like this. There's fish more or less all over the place, but there's certain things you can look for. 
Uh, out here you have the main current. Uh, a lot of food coming there. And in the seams of the current between the slower water and the faster water, there's usually a lot of fish. And above here, we have a very shallow part uh, with very fast rapids and a lot of uh, small gnats and uh, nymphs and stuff that floats down into the deeper parts here. We got like a really clear edge here and everything becomes quite deep here and you can actually see several fish standing just down here in the, in the deeper parts. So when fishing streams like this, have a close look at how the structure is and try to calculate where you can find the biggest fish. Where would you stand if you were a grayling out here? Probably where there is as much food as possible. So yeah, look, this is the Bibiomasi. Normally it comes probably earlier in, during the season, uh, but it's a pretty big fly. It's not a water insect, but it uh, fly on the water and die on the water. So that's uh, sometimes good food for the, for the fish as well. Uh, it's very popular fishing this imitation uh, all over uh, Red Britain and um, all those islands. So this is the imitation I tied this morning. You see, it's just a little bit of a white wing, quite long leg with CDC, quite a uh, big head, and of course a, a CDC uh, body on the knees. I think that might match this, uh, this imitation. I mean, the fly is a Bibio Massi and uh, we, we do not have the opportunity to fish them all year round. In my country, this is more like uh, March, April. But here, I'm very surprised. So I tie so, a few of them. And uh, this is not uh, an insect which goes normally from the water, but uh, fish take advantage of uh, all the food drifting down. So let's release it now. So let's see if there is any other looking for this kind of food. Definitely over a kilo. Oh, I think it's close to be ready. Oh, it's just a little bit slower. Look at that fish. No, oh, look at that. Uh, well, until now, we mainly seen uh, like small gnats, yeah. the mm -hmm. black gnats, uh, drifting down, clumping together in the back currents and stuff. But now we've seen quite a lot of small, small olive mayflies. Mm -hmm. This is probably what has been hatching yesterday, and yeah. now they turn into spinners. Right? Yes. Like, yeah. Apparently, they are not really big. What, no. What size do you think it is? Well, okay, this is small. <laughs> yeah, it might have been bigger from the beginning. <laughs> so yes, clear wings, and yeah. kind of a brownish olive body. Yeah, 
with a hint of red. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot. Well, we've seen several big graylings rising out here, uh, just around these stones. Um, so I'm going to try to sneak up on them and see, see what we can do. They're usually not that spooky, but there's no harm in being careful. That's a good one. That's <laughs> come on. <laughs> Big stones and deep as hell. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and he he's not tired yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Excellent! Bravo! Bravo, monsieur! Oh, yeah. I love this. <laughs> so, we have some really great fishing. Mm this evening. Um, we've been catching them mainly on CDC flies, a uh, variety. Uh, and can you show us what you've been using, Mark? Yes, um, of course the large majority of the fly is made out of CDC. Yes. But uh, today I've been using mainly two patterns, which has been very effective. Mm. That one, which is a, a caddis. As yeah. you see, uh, there is quite a lot of caddis on the water yeah. in the beginning of the day and even during the night. Mm. And uh, we have been also uh, finding quite a few uh, ephemera, I mean, uh, mayflies, yeah. and pretty bright color like this, yes. uh, which both of them, I mean, all the flies here, are made out of CDC. Mm. CDC, this is a French name, and it says Cul de canard, CDC, cul de canard. And this is uh, the name of the feather we take out of the dock. And this is dock spot feather, in fact. It's a very famous feather because it's uh, got a lot of quality that other material doesn't have. Uh, there is a lot of difference between uh, the CDC and the chicken uh, ackle leg, which are much, much stiffer. And by the way, I brought some of those to show you uh, what is exactly the, the difference of uh, the material. And uh, you know the CDC, this is that. Hmm. And as you see, it's very soft, very lifelike, and that very much give the illusion of life. So if you compare to, uh, to regular, regular ackle, like mm. uh, this is a very famous uh, ackle uh, that I use for tail. This is the Coq de Leon Pardo. It's a very nice uh, ackle that I use for tail. This is really much stiffer than the other material. This one is very soft and this one is very stiff compared to. Look at that, stiff and this extremely soft. And by the way, it's extremely light as well. Look at that. Just floats away. So these feathers are very, very nice to use because it's naturally oily, which helps the flotation, and you can use it for making wings and body. But you have to use a special treatment to get the best of the fly, and that is the CDC oil. I will show you how to use it. The first thing you have to do when you use CDC flies, before you use it, when you are going to tie it onto your leader, is to use a drop of CDC oil to protect the fly. This is extremely important. This is the same kind of oil that you find on the dock, and that will allow you to fish several fish without even touching your fly. So now what I'm going to do is to use a little drop of CDC oil directly on the body. You don't need to oil everything, right? Just a little drop on the body here, and you let it sink. It will be on the body, 
and the excess when you are casting will definitely put some oil on the wing. So do not overdress with a lot of oil, it's not necessary. This is just enough to take probably up to 10 fish without any new treatment. Okay, the best is probably to try to catch a fish yeah. and then I will show you how to clean. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Right here? You can try. Okay, let's go. It's floating really well. Of course. <laughs> of course it's floating very well. I mean, CDC plus CDC oil, it's perfect. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Great stuff, man. <laughs> That's a nice grayling. <laughs> Sit down fishing. True. He's a bit angry. Yeah. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Look at this. A nice fish. And yes. Apparently it has been hurt by Pike here, but he's in very good shape. So now, you see the, the fly will sink in the water because it's full of mucus of the fish. So the best way to do it is just to take a few meters out of the line and then drop the fly into the water. You let it drift down, even with another couple of meters. And now, when everything is in line like this, what you do is just a quick, like this. You do it a second time, and then you will just need to full cast several times and you are ready to fish again. You see that the fly is floating. I, I even did not touch it. So this is excellent. <laughs> you CDC, take care of it and you will get good fishing. So I just caught a beautiful grayling on a classic CDC fly, small F fly. But if I would throw it out there again straight away, it would sink like a rock. So what I want to do is dry it a little bit. And for that, I have a patch of amadou, which is sort of a fungus that grows on trees. And what I do is I just put the small fly in there squeeze it between the amadou and that will suck all the water out of the wing making the fly float as well again <laughs> perfectly dry again and ready to catch one more grayling uh, one thing i really like with this stuff is that it's a hundred percent natural product no strange chemicals and stuff in it uh, and it has to the capacity to suck up way more than its own weight in water. I think it's like 10 times or something. It's incredible. Which makes it very important where you place it in your fishing equipment. Place it high and preferably in a pocket like I do. So it won't get wet from rain or if you fall into the water and stuff because then you're gonna have a problem because it will be totally filled with water and it's gonna take a whole dry day to dry and then it will be perfectly usable again but you won't dry any more flies that day. 